Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, well thank you very much, and I'm very sorry that I can't be with you uh, in person. Uh, I'm very glad that my uh, colleague uh, Karen Hoydal is there from Norway representing uh, the TCI board. Uh, we as TCI are very happy to uh, be a, a co-organizer of this event. And so what I wanted to do at the outset is share a little bit of information about our network uh, with you as well this, uh, 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 this uh, early afternoon. Um, and then talk a little bit about the uh, subject topic. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, innovation and the role that clusters can play, uh, specifically in the Indian context, uh, in moving uh, innovation forward. Um, so if you uh, can see the first slide uh, um, of the presentation, uh, if that's uh, shown there on the large, sc large screen. Oh, let me... So you see it also here, uh, uh, probably in my background. Uh, what is TCI? <clears throat> TCI is a global professional network. Um, we bring to be together people that work with cluster-based economic development in many parts of the world uh, that really try to use this as an instrument to better the economic prosperity of the regions, the locations in which they work, uh, and help companies to be successful that are based in these locations. We're truly global, and that's one of the reasons why we're so excited to be part of this uh, uh, conference in India. We have members uh, from Latin America to Europe, uh, from North America to uh, different parts of Asia. Uh, uh, we have a, a strong and growing African contingent. We're quite strong in Central Asia and Russia. So we are really trying to enable learning across these different constituencies. Now, TCI originally stood for the Competitiveness Institute. Um, but another way to think about these three letters, TCI, is to think about the role of territory. We always think about locations. We think uh, uh, that you truly need to understand the context in a particular place uh, to, to run effective economic development efforts. The C stands for clusters. We do think that these related groups of industries that you find in one place have a strong impact on economic performance. We'll talk about that a little bit later but also a useful tool in order to think about how you can help companies and communities to be successful in the global economy. And finally, the I might stand for innovation, which is the topic of our session, uh, but it is really a rallying cry for many regions around the world to think about what they can do uh, to reach uh, sustainable levels of prosperity. Uh, just quickly, you see here in the background a picture from our last global conference which uh, took place in Kolding in Denmark, um, you get a little bit of glimpse of this community of practitioners that really likes to share, that likes to discuss, that likes to engage. Hopefully a little bit uh, of that spirit is also with you uh, today. We have more than 60 organizational members. Uh, Karin Oydal is going to represent uh, Innovation Norway and talk about uh, uh, what they are doing. She is, uh, Innovation Norway is one of our uh, members, the MSME Foundation in India, we're very well, uh, happy to welcome as one of our new members as well. Uh, we have international associations, we have companies that are engaged in cluster efforts, uh, we have universities that are engaged, a very broad mix of people uh, and organizations there. More than 500 individual members and about 9,000 or so uh, that we regularly reach through our uh, uh, different events, newsletters, uh, and so on. Now on the next page, uh, you see what does the TCI network offer. Uh, and it goes really from the left hand from inform, you know, something that we are just trying to put out there, uh, to on the other hand, you know, through connect to collaborate, really a platform for our members uh, to work together. We have a website, we have a clear uh, media, a social media presence, so I'll invite you to uh, check out on, on the news from different parts of the world, what's going on in this network things that might, you might find useful for your own activities. We have the conferences, we have a global conference coming up in November in, in Mexico, in Monterey, uh, where we're going to look at uh, issues like shared value, how, are going to, how can you use clusters as a way to also have social impact in the communities in which you work. I know it's a topic that's very relevant in countries like India. Uh, we have regional events like uh, um, uh, uh, an upcoming meeting that we're going to have in Australia. 
Uh, we're probably going to have one in Central Europe, in the Czech Republic later this year, and also in North America where we're organizing our members some more. We have topical conferences, for example, an upcoming meeting of ICT firms that are organized through clusters. They're going to meet in Bern in Switzerland, really trying to build business-to-business -business relationships. Uh, then we have a number of regional groups in Latin America, Europe, and Australia, and we have launched a set of new services for our members over the last couple of months uh, and years. We have interest groups. Uh, the most active one at the moment is looking at the impact that organized cluster efforts and government funding of those efforts have on economic outcomes. Uh, very interesting work that uh, maybe Karin can also discuss with some of you more. We do peer reviews. Uh, regional governments and clusters that have launched new programs ask other practitioners to provide their feedback uh, from what they've seen works and what doesn't work so well. Um, not as consultant, unpaid, but really sharing best practices and learning across our network. Uh, TCI is helping our members as a project participant, often in ways uh, where it's uh, related to information dissemination. Uh, we're working on a new program for mentor matching, uh, so trying to bring together experienced cluster practitioners with younger people in the field. And those mentor relationships can also be across uh, uh, geography, something that I'll hopefully uh, have, have, have high hopes for, that this can provide value. And ultimately, we'll also do more on professional development, making sure that uh, uh, the experience and knowledge resident in our network can be accessible to others as well. So final slide on, on, on TCI. What can you do? Well, first of all, you can follow. Um, on social media, on our newsletter, so you can sign up on our website, tci-network.org. Uh, you can participate in conferences like uh, the Global Conferences, the conference that is coming up in, uh, in, in Monterey in Mexico, and you can become a member. You can be, become a member as an individual or as an, uh, as an organization and really take full value of the offering that this network, network uh, brings. Uh, we have special prices for um, uh, emerging economies, so hopefully this is something that is uh, accessible and useful uh, for many of you in India. I know there's large interest also in other parts of the world to see what is going on in your country, what is going on in your organizations. So let me now shift a little bit um, to the topic of this panel, um, promoting innovation in clusters. Now we all agree that innovation is really becoming more and more critical. It's becoming critical for locations. Locations that are not innovative are not prosperous. They are not prosperous today, and they're definitely not going to be prosperous tomorrow. Uh, innovation is also critical for firms. Firms can't just rest on the products and services that they are providing to the market today. They have to be innovative in terms of what they offer to the market, how they offer it to the market, and how they organize internally their value chains. So everybody agrees innovation is important. Um, but we also know that, especially as we talk about science-driven innovation, innovation remains highly concentrated geographically. So it's really very spiky. If you look at a global map uh, and, and kind of have hills that, that reflect the number of patents that are coming from individual locations, it is not spread out equally. It is true that new locations, and India is one of them, have really entered the fray, have entered the global innovation environment much more over the, over the last few years. Uh, but even there, it's a few locations, it's a few communities, it's relatively small numbers of people. The question is, how can you succeed in this global race for innovation? And what I want to put forward is a sense that what we've learned from the last couple of years of experience in academic research is that you have to be strong on multiple dimensions. Three dimensions in particular have turned out to be very important. First, you have to be strong and excellent at the level of your institution, whether it's the firm, whether it's the academic institution, whether it's the research lab, whether it's the university. But that's really the core. Your ability to play in the innovation game depends on your inter internal capabilities. And of course, there's lots of research uh, uh, that helps us to kind of dig deeper into that black box of the organization. But then we've learned that also the regional context, the local dynamism of which the cluster is the central part, is absolutely crucial. If you are a very smart individual, if you have a strong company,
but you're alone. You don't have these supporting institutions, these partners that you can work with, these suppliers, these service providers, uh, uh, these, these other types of researchers. It is very hard to sustain innovative in the long haul. So that's why we see these innovation hubs, this concentration, this geographic concentration of innovation in a few places, both globally, but also within countries like India. And the third level, however, is also important. What we've seen is that innovation increasingly becomes globally connected. Not even the best places in the world have all the knowledge, all the capabilities that are required for a particular type of innovation in-house, in their location. So you need to connect to other locations to be able to innovate in the long haul, to be part of that game. Now the critical insight is that these three elements, the level of the individual organization, the level of the location, and the level of the global, uh, global uh, um, uh, linkages are interconnected. Having global linkages is not valuable if you don't have in your organization the relevant skills. Having the global linkages doesn't make you an attractive partner unless your location is pursued, uh, is viewed internationally as an innovation hub. Now, being strong as an innovation location depends again very much on the quality, <coughs> excuse me, the quality of your individual uh, uh, institutions. It's not just about having good connections and dynamics internally. So these are kind of mutually reinforcing qualities that drive innovation. What have we learned? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I think as we try to understand the role of clusters, we need to look at the academic evidence on how is cluster presence driving innovation. And then we can think about how you can use clusters as a tool, as an instrument of policy of collective action to enhance innovative uh, activity even more. Before we go into that, however, I think it's very crucial that we, for a minute, stop with the term innovation and really think hard about what we mean. I've in this slide tried to break this up into three levels that are all very important. Innovation might mean assimilate global knowledge and get the global best practices, the best ideas, technologies, and so on into your region. That's innovation. It's not new to the world, but it is new to your location, and it enhances your economic performance <coughs> and ultimately your prosperity in your region. The second step is adapting. So you're taking global knowledge, but you then apply this global knowledge to find solutions that meet the specific needs that you find in your location. A lot of that has been happening in India and China for the last couple of years. Large growing markets with needs, with regulations, with customers that are not quite the same as in North America or Western Europe can use the new technologies that might have been developed uh, in Boston or in San Francisco um, or in Oslo, but you have to adapt them to the local needs, frugal innovation, things like that. So that is also important. And then the third element is the created entirely new knowledge that didn't exist out there in the world before. Now, in the way that we measure innovation, and sometimes also in the way that we think about that, especially uh, in Western Europe, Karin might have uh, more to say about that, but also in other parts of the world, is to focus very much on the create part, on the final step, the new pain, the breakthrough. But for us, as, an, as a society, as an economy, and as, an, as a firm to be successful, these two other parts, uh, assimilating, adapting, are at least as important. One of the crucial lessons uh, from, from our research about regions and innovations over the last few years is that the ultimate economic impact does not depend only on kind of that top researcher, that top research institution, but it depends on whether you achieve the diffusion of innovative activity throughout your economy and ultimately throughout your community. Quite frankly, I think that's also a big issue for India. You have a very successful, strong IT cluster activities around ITC, but this is a small island in the large sea of the Indian society and the Indian economy. Ultimately, you'll need to find ways to diffuse more of what makes India strong 
<coughs> in areas like ITC services to make it strong in other parts of the economy as well. So once we focus a little bit more on what we mean of, uh, with innovation, what does the evidence tell you? Well, we now have a lot of quantitative hard evidence that shows very strongly that the presence of clusters, so the, the regional concentration of economic activity in related industries has a very strong positive impact on innovative activity, on patenting, on new firm growth, on entrepreneurship, also on structural change, on driving uh, the emergence of new industries, new types of economic uh, uh, activities. Now, not go into the detail of this, uh, there are some references here, I'm happy to provide more, but I think there is an increasing recognition in the academic literature that this is what's going on, that innovation is not happening flat across the world, it's happening in certain places, and these places tend very strongly to have clusters because that's one of the important ingredients uh, of what makes a location able to innovate successfully. But then moving to the next slide, just realizing that clusters as agglomerations have a positive impact on innovation doesn't mean that we understand how to use cluster structures for policy. These clusters, these agglomerations of related industries, they emerge naturally. There's often nothing that government did, and in fact, government often has a pretty poor track record in kind of creating these agglomerations. These agglomerations are the reaction to market forces in combination with uh, intended and sometimes unintended government policies. But how can we then use cluster organizations? Because I think our experience has been that while the agglomeration in a cluster happens naturally, the collaboration within those institutions does not happen automatically. So a couple of ideas on how you can use cluster structures based on a cluster organization that brings these different players together uh, in order to enhance innovation. So let's start with a, a top left uh, uh, box, delivery channel. We have a lot of attempts to try to improve the quality of smaller companies, smaller medium-sized companies, their strategic capabilities, their knowledge about technologies, their knowledge about the market, and so on. Working with one small company at a time, at a time is a not very leveraged activity. It just costs too much, and you don't have the impact. Clusters provide an ability, cluster organizations, to reach many companies at the same time. That way you really can create an impact. Uh, you can enhance their ability to innovate and really stress this first level, the excellence of the individual organization in ways that you couldn't otherwise uh, uh, do. Moving to the top right, platform. We know that to create a better environment in a region for innovation, you need to make a lot of small changes in the business environment quality, which might have to do with regulation, it might have to do with public infrastructure, it might have to do with things that affect how the university runs its educational programs. Getting this right requires getting the knowledge from all the players in the cluster together and then acting jointly upon, those, uh, uh, upon that information. That requires a platform that doesn't happen automatically. Going down uh, uh, to the bottom level, uh, uh, to the right, again, a platform, a cluster organization can help companies to work together. We had an example in the Boston area in the United States uh, where we had 500 medical device companies that had located there because of the environment that was provided, the universities and so on, but they didn't know about each other. Once the platform was there, MassMedic, uh, the organization of the medical device industry, they started to collaborate. They started to penetrate markets jointly. They tried to, started to, to uh, uh, develop new types of offerings to the market that none of them could have individually done. It doesn't happen automatically. There is a private benefit, but the collective, uh, collective action problems are often too hard to overcome if there is no platform. And then finally, you know, I talked about the global linkages as the third level of what makes a location strong uh, or what drives innovative performance, cluster organizations can help raise the visibility um, of a certain location that it is specialized in a field like, uh, 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 like uh, you know, IT or biotech, but also things that are, uh, that are less high-tech. Now, uh, to close off my, uh, my comments, 
I think the critical issue here is, you know, the overall conference is under the heading of uh, uh, what can be learned from the uh, global experience. I think it is important to see how that learning can translate it into India's specific solution. You need to be very clear about what your objectives are if you organize cluster efforts and match those with the needs of your local economy and community. What is it that you need to do? Is it really creating the, 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 the top advanced academic research? Is it the diffusion? Is it the adaption towards regulatory standards? Uh, is it upgrading many SMEs? Figure out what you need to do. Structure these efforts in a way that matches your institutional capacity. Uh, we have in Europe a lot of challenges that we come with very sophisticated policy programs and then we move to countries, whether it's uh, in southern, uh, southern Europe or Eastern Europe, Central Europe, that just don't have the institutional capacity to deliver these programs effectively. We see the same in a lot of development uh, programs where the World Bank and others try to use cluster instruments. Make sure that what you're trying to do in your region is matched by the capability of your institutions, public uh, as well as public-private. And finally, make sure that you have different types of efforts for different groups. You know, what you do with the IT sector in Bangalore can look very different to what you do with the smaller handicraft um, uh, uh, cluster in the north of uh, India. Make sure that you have a portfolio of the right type of tools uh, that help different groups to reach innovation at their pace, at their level at which it is re uh, uh, really relevant. So ultimately, I think India and many other emerging economies have huge potential by using the cluster idea, using cluster approaches in order to address uh, uh, the challenges that they face. In fact, you know, that's exactly in line with what they need to do uh, after kind of taking away some at least uh, of the cross-cutting business environment barriers that existed. I think India has still some of those to deal with, uh, but then it's kind of the next level of economic development. This will only be successful, however, uh, if India finds its own solution. Rather than to try and run after others, uh, see what others have done and copy it, see what others have done, like uh, what Karin will tell you about the Norwegian experience, and learn from it. Think about it and develop your solutions uh, that is right for the Indian context. Again, I hope this, uh, this has been somewhat useful for uh, the discussion that will follow. Uh, I'm very glad that this event is taking place, that TCI could take uh, part in organizing it, uh, and I'm just sorry that I can't be uh, with you in person. Thank you.